We are Saints in the South, your source for gospel growth and good times. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Saints in the South, episode 200. Wow. What? 200, 200 episodes <laughs> in. Um, and as you can see, and, or as you will hear in just a second, we've got some of our old friends back with us. We have Uncle Andrew. We've got the Rogue Bishop. We've got Average Joe. We've got uh, Marcus, who the is Bishop Corbett. That's right. <laughs> we've got Heidi back with us. We've got Charlie Moore, Bishop Moore, myself, and we've got Kenny. What's so, up? Kenny, the professor. Y'all say hey. Hey. Hey, guys. Hey. Man, it's been a while. Yep. Good to, good to have you back on with us. Uh, figured we would get to get together here just for a little bit. I know everybody's schedule is crazy. Lots of things going on. Heidi just came in from Teaching Institute. Just drove in on two wheels feeling so spiritually full that's right how's that go how's that institute going for you so far i love it best Very calling good. favorite calling it's awesome encourage your single adults 18 to 30 to attend because it actually is a commandment at the end there's my plus. <laughs> there you go Very good, good. Very good yep yeah. uncle andrew how you been man doing good doing good we got my socks on Oh, All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, <laughs> that old box of socks. got a few holes in them, but yeah, yeah. You gotta have Very holes good. in your socks. You can't get your feet in them. That's right. Ooh. <laughs> uh, he's got Bishop, them all. Joey, Bishop, Joey, Bishop Corbett. Bishop Joe. Corbett, yeah. how you doing? Man, uh, hanging in there like, like a, a hair in a biscuit. biscuit. Everybody, a biscuit. There you that's go. That's one of them. One of them things I used to say, um, which I can't say anymore because I'm a bishop. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so, so when we start, I'm just sitting here thinking we start. I'm here in my bishop's office because we just had a, a meeting tonight here at church. And so I just, instead of driving home, I just come in here and threw it on the church's Wi-Fi. So I don't know if <laughs> good I owe them something. Good luck with that. Or, we might yeah. lose you. Absolutely yeah, good luck I was going to say, I may be the first one here. to get out of here um, yeah. because of that. But Hold uh, on your no, offering. <laughs> as we, so we started in the Relief Society room, right? That's, That's when right. we started this thing. Yep, that was the yeah. very first episode. And, and it was a horrible, I mean, we, it was only audio, and it was terrible. It was terrible audio. And so I thought it was appropriate that I would at least perhaps end this, at least the Come Follow Me section of this thing back at the church. And so here there I you am. go. Um, but, there man, we've go. come a long ways. That's right. <laughs> right down the hall. And uh, <laughs> Bishop Moore, uh, currently working on everything, but he's been on here with us uh, several times, different things. And uh, so how, how are you doing? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Literally in his scrubs for y'all those who can't see it right now. Yeah. So I want to uh I want to start out by telling y'all a story real quick. Um whenever we first started this thing, uh I was and we were talking about it, we were needing a uh, a mixer of some sort to be able to plug all of our microphones into that would plug into the computer. So the recording would take place. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I was dry, I'd, uh, driven down to Tallahassee to, uh, to handle some claims. And I was in the process of looking for one of these mixers. Uh, and they, you know, they were 250, 300, 400 bucks expensive, really wasn't wanting to pay that, uh, that much but I was kind of willing to and uh, had two claims to look at in Tallahassee. And as I, I could either hit this uh, guitar shop, I think the the guitar center, it was a guitar center I was stopping by and uh, I could hit it on the way into Tallahassee or on my way out. And I decided to hit it on the way in. So I go in talking to the guy, letting him know I want to start a podcast, letting him know what I'm needing and everything. And, and he takes me right to what I'd been looking at online and uh, sure enough, you know, 250 bucks. And I was like, hey, man, well, literally while I was there, a guy walks in off the street and he's holding this same unit and he wants to sell it to the uh, the center. And uh, and the guy and the guy's manager was not there. He says the manager's not here, so we can't per we can't per buy that from you today. He said, but if you come back tomorrow, um we'll take a look at it. The guy says, okay. And he walked out. I walked out and followed him. And I said, Hey, I'll buy that from you right now. How much you want for it? He said, $50. I 
I said, give it to me. I'll take it. $50. Yep. Wow. And that was my quote unquote sign that, <laughs> that, that this whole podcast deal was, uh, what was to be. Right. And, uh, so it works in mysterious ways. That's right. Absolutely. Uh, even in pawn shops. <laughs> or guitar shops. Uh, any uh, any any favorite memories? Any, any things that uh, that that y'all have from the last? I mean, we're, we're behind the scenes, here, but yeah, behind, behind the behind camera the or in the... That's right. Uh, any uh, any thoughts uh, from your time uh, here on on Saints and South podcast? Any, any, I, from any of you? I remember. There's many times, but I remember one time in particular when you were on vacation in the mountains or somewhere, and you were, <laughs> and we ragged you about how what's going on how did how are you getting paid more than us that's right that's you're right, able to yeah. live off in the mountains and anyway we we're at my lake houses and stuff that's right I, we, I, I don't know there's so many things i can't your story like, reminds me of a scripture what's that what's that um that says a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's that's a good lesson wow very good yeah absolutely thank yeah. you uh bishop moore for uh bringing us bring, bringing me back down a notch my, it's my spiritual gift yeah absolutely <laughs> spiritual gift <laughs> bringing everybody down a notch yeah hey so uh i don't know if y'all know this but some of our highest viewed videos are from uh, uncle andrew's uncle andrew Fox. man those are that's some good uh, those are some good little stories yeah. was good <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, we miss that, Uncle Andrew. We need to bring back your box of socks, man. That was a Gave fan favorite. Out. Gave them all out. <laughs> <laughs> the whole I say one of my favorite memories, and this just popped up on my something. I don't know how I, because it's not near Mother's Day, but our Mother's Day episode. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I had forgotten about it because mm -hmm. you know it's in my brain, but I seeing that picture and all the women that we did that with and how right. so many of those women there are married to men on this podcast. And just, that was just such a neat experience for me to actually, we were nitty and gritty about motherhood, but spiritual. And I love that too. Like, let's talk about what makes us cry and what makes us happy and why we're in this. Yeah. 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 Very Steven good. wasn't yeah. able to get on. He's the only one that's missing tonight. And you were actually at their house, at Stephen Marianne's house that was recorded. Was yep. it? No, that was oh. at Heidi's house. Oh, was, was it? At, Heidi? Was your house, Heidi? Yes. Okay. That but but Marianne was there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> awesome. And uh, and actually, the uh, the only sister there that was not married is now married. Oh yeah, right. Sister Crawford. Our single yeah. sister is. That's right. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because of that podcast. Because of right, there you go. Because of this. <laughs> That's right. Saints and well, South very very good. Yeah. The the uh, the whole the whole uh, socks joke uh comes from our first christmas episode um <laughs> that first year and we got to talking about christmas gifts and everything yes. yeah. and uh somebody andrew was like man just give me some a, a box of socks and i'm happy you know with, with a christmas gift and i i was profusely refusing don't waste a christmas gift with <laughs> socks on me okay i can go buy my own socks if i get give me something good you know what i mean yeah. but uh that's where that whole box of socks came from uh well before we get into Dr. Seuss. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Fox of socks and and fox on pops and all kinds <laughs> of there's one thing about this podcast. If you don't watch it from the beginning, you may not know what's going on. Yeah, there's all kinds of inside I mean, jokes here. There's, there's just all kind of things. The <laughs> time that we dressed up, remember the Halloween dressing up? I, oh I, yeah. I think we were all I, I laughed hard on that one point. Man. I think about the what when we ended, when we started into the third year. I think it was really you know wearing us down. It was getting right. uh, getting to us, um, and so we come up with all kind of things. So anyway, yeah. Who who did we have? we had uh, Moses, Moses, Colonel Sanders, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> it's the all weirdest right. conversation ever. Oh, it'll, that's right. It was uplifting though, and so that's what matters. Yep, and uh, and then we have our our newest uh, faces. We've got uh, uh, Michael Rogue Bishop uh, mm -hmm. that has joined us, and we've got our latest uh, podcaster, Average Joe. So appreciate all the con contributions everybody has given. Uh, and, and I know we mentioned two hundred episodes, but just think, I mean, that's this is August. Let's no, not August. December of 2019, I believe we met at your house to talk about this project. This right. was your project. This was your mm -hmm. baby. This was something right. that you want to do. And you had called upon me and Andrew and Kenny and Steven 
and somebody else. Was that it? No, I guess that was it. No, there was Brian. Was, was well, Brian? Brian he was. Brian never did it. He did. No, <laughs> Brian, 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 Brian shot me down from the get go. My brother. Right away. On yeah, the phone. He, he's like, no, nah, he's like, that's, um, that's all right. But yeah, um, family. Like first meeting. But it, but it's crazy to think four years, four years yeah. of anything. <laughs> it's a yeah. long time. So. Lots happened yeah. during that time. Yeah, you I'm. Got, getting, I mean, I'm just one. proud. I'm just proud that it's still it, you and you all. We're striving. We're all striving right. together. So you've got a bachelor's degree in striving now, Jackson. That's right. Yep. That's right. Yep. <laughs> well, hey, let's uh, let's take a few minutes, and uh, if maybe all of you will have at least uh, one thought um, from from our last uh, lesson of "Come Follow Me" in 2023. Yep. So this comes from uh, Revelation chapters 15 through 22. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I'll start out by reading the beginning here. As you may recall, the book of Revelation begins with the Savior declaring himself to be the beginning and the ending. Fittingly, it ends with similar words. I am the beginning and the end. But what does that mean? The beginning and the end of what? The book of Revelation powerfully testifies that Jesus Christ is the beginning and end of everything, of the great sweeping drama of human existence and salvation. He is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, and he is the king of kings who brings an end to wickedness, sorrow, and even death itself, and ushers in a new heaven and a new earth. Yet before this new heaven and new earth arrive, there is much for us to overcome, plagues, wars, rampant wickedness, all of which Revelation vividly describes. But Jesus Christ is with us during this part too. He is the bright and morning star that shines in the dark sky as a promise that dawn is coming soon. And it is coming soon. He is coming, even as he invites us, come unto me. He also comes to us. I come quickly, he declares. And with hope and faith that has been purified in the fires of latter-day ad adversity, we answer. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, Awesome. With that, as always, I will open it up. Any uh, anybody want to start this thing? Uh, really quick, did we did we mention at the beginning that this is our two hundredth episode? Yeah. We did. Okay, yeah, I think you were yeah, first thing we said. I, I think I took a nap. I fell asleep or something. I thought it was the first thing that came to my mind was before that. It says um, sometimes the biggest obstacle to learning is our assumption that we don't need to learn that we already know. As you read the scriptures, be open to new insights that the Lord wants to give you. So the thought that came to my mind was actually a funny thought. When we were living in Oklahoma City <clears throat> many, many years ago, there was a youth that came up to bear her testimony. And the first thing she said was, I don't know why I keep coming here. I already know everything. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was really good. I was like, wow. That's, 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 that's the first thing I thought of when I read that. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. cool. She was a teenager, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Of course. If she knew everything. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Absolutely. If, if we could only go back to that day, man, you know, I, I remember when I knew everything. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, it, there's a lot of imagery, man. And we're finishing I, up the book of Revelation. This is, this is crazy, man. There's lots I'll, of. I'll tell you my thoughts just really quickly. And then I'll, that way I can just listen and then relax. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, so this whole thing, this, you know, this wind up scene here uh, talking about the second coming and, and think, of course it talks about all the disasters and the, a lot of the bad things that may, that will happen, you know, before we get to the millennium and all these things. But uh, one thing that uh, really stands out to me, well, there's a couple of things that stood out to me as I was kind of studying and, and listening to other podcasts. Scripture Central is always wonderful. Uh, they have wonderful uh, videos and stuff. But, uh, you know, just talking about this, you know, talking about the, the bride, you know, the lamb and the bride. And we know the lamb is Jesus Christ. The bride is the church. And of course, we know that the church is the members of the church, the saints. That's us. Um and one thing that stood out to me that they said, and I've never thought about it like this because I, I tend to, and I've heard it so many times and, and myself have, I've said this uh, just amongst friends and things. I would never preach this kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, a lot of times you look at this world, how wicked it is and just how bad it's getting. And you go, wow, Jesus must be really close because it is getting terrible here. And the fact is, is that the second coming of Jesus Christ has 
less to do with how wicked the world is and more to do with how prepared his bride is. Um, so because the world, honestly, I think we can all agree it's wicked enough. If that was the case, if that was the only reason he needed to come is to wipe away the wickedness. Yeah, I would feel like it's pretty it's pretty wicked now. I think it'd be fine if he showed up today. Um, but it's really about how prepared we are uh, as members of the church. Um, and so I, if if anything, if however long it takes for him to to come back and, and for the and for God to to send him back and all these things. It's got a lot to do with how prepared we are, which is why we hear the 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 parable of the ten virgins and things, which I think is probably one of the mo most important parables that Jesus taught. I mean, they were all important, but I think that one teaches a lot of uh, some deeper doctrine uh, that relates specifically to us as members of the church in these latter days. And so, you know, how prepared are we? Do we have oil in our lamps? Uh, and the oil is the spiritual strengthening. The, the spiritual things that we need in our life? Are we strengthened spiritually enough uh, to be ready for, for him to show up again? Um, and so, you know, that just really stuck out to me. It's not so much about, oh, he needs to show up so he can wipe out the wickedness and we can go on with the party and, and have an after party and it's going to be great. Um, it's more like, you know, hey, are you prepared to do the things that you need to do um, when I get there? basically is everything going to be set do we do we have enough temples in the world you see it and it's really starting to go faster and faster uh with the temples we're building the way the lessons with come follow me is happening so you know those were my thoughts as i as i heard these things the other little tiny thing little side note um was how you know uh we'll sing and we'll shout with the armies of heaven and it talks about the armies of heaven coming down to wipe out the wickedness we are helping build those armies by doing temple work. Those angels and those people that Amen. will be there, you know, and, and ready to fight and ready to do or what, you know what I mean? And to, and to support and to do all these things, we will be a part of building those armies by doing their temple work, by having them baptized, confirmed, uh, you know, all these, all these spirits that want, that want that and are waiting for that. That's, you know, a lot of that is, is on upon our shoulders, you know? Uh, and so, you know, that was, those were my thoughts as I, as I read about these, these things here. So very good. Uh, appreciate that. Um, Bishop Moore, just in, just in case, if you have to end up jumping off, you want to go ahead and you got anything you want to share? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Can I you back you, what you'll want to share as soon as he gets paged. That's right. That's right. Oh, yeah, guys, yeah. I had something great. I got to go. He's waiting yeah. for, uh, uh I was going like, Heidi, how about you? Oh, you got ahead. anything? Um, actually, I was thinking a lot about last week's lesson, which I know y'all already covered, but um, <coughs> I actually taught Sunday school too, because I, I can't say no. If you want me to teach your class, I will do it. I love it so much. I love teaching. I, I was teaching the youth and I, I love teaching the youth, especially even though they do know everything. I learn a lot from them, frankly. Yeah. Um, just a lot about how so many of the ancient things that sometimes we're criticized for are in the book of Revelation. And we see that as we continue through the end of the book, how there's nothing actually new in the gospel and everything is just part of the restoration, part of being revealed. The more we understand about the past, the more we're going to understand the things that are coming forward. Any new revelation or progress we see from the prophet will be like, well, of course we, that's, that's what's going to happen. I think sometimes we suspend our sense of supernatural because supernatural is for movies and TV, not the gospel, but really so many, I mean, this gospel is a supernatural entity. It's that, that quality of like, we can't explain it. Anyway, I'm just rambling, but I think that's, um, the more we study the history, um, one thing I've learned recently, um, Tad R. Callister, um, as he, in his book, what is it called? Uh, the Case for the Book of Mormon or something like that. I just butchered the title. He says that of all the archaeological sites on Earth, only about 4% have been uncovered. And almost all of these archaeological sites have some sort of religious component. And they show the same 
type of thing over and over temples religion and like why are we surprised when we keep seeing these things in the future temple building and i just feel like that last week's lesson really flows into and of course jesus christ will come again there's it's mm-hmm. it's a pattern of gospel like we're always a little surprised like could you believe that happened at conference but if like yeah yeah, yeah of course i can believe that happened at conference because it was a hundred years ago and a thousand years ago moses all the previous mm-hmm. prophets so knowing christ comes again i think we've got to at the end of book of revelation we hear about his glory well that's everything they talked about in the old testament too talking about christ being born it's the same pattern twice and i, I just really like how all these lessons point to things we don't know but need to have weekly uncovered in our minds yeah, we've uh, re- repetition is is necessary, uh, you know, and you can I mean, with I always think of sports, you know, the, the way you the way you improve something is through constant repetition, getting reps, you know, getting, you know, shooting the basketball, hitting the baseball, mat time, wrestling, wh- whatever it is. And that's, that's the same with uh, with, uh, with with the general conferences, church every Sunday, repetition, repetition mm-hmm. it is necessary. We'll so, share one thing. All right. <laughs> um, so, so Jessica's oldest brother is a retired SEAL, and he says, and he, he told me one time I thought it was kind of applicable. He said his whole career of 20 years as a SEAL, that um, he, very few missions, very little did he do in 20 years as it pertains to real combat. But he said, 19 and a half years of his service as a SEAL was preparing for for the what ifs or the or what may come or what you know when when they're called they're ready to act Mm. and 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 it's i just thought it was kind of a life lesson of that's that is that's what we do and that's who we are and that's that's uh you know we're we it's in our name that we're the latter day saints and so as we read about revelation and read about the end of time um that that we will one day need to be prepared i mean hopefully all of this basic training or training ground that we're doing um we don't see it for naught and 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 that we enjoy the journey a little bit and not always look for the you know, gosh, when Christ will get here or I'll be happy when or I'll be uh, yeah. satisfied when I reach this pinnacle or this milestone or whatever. But anyway, I, as as Nick shared that with me, that he did he never he, he did have several missions, but not most of his career was not that most of his career was training, preparing, getting ready for the what ifs. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think the key is figuring out how to enjoy the process and the, the, the preparation and the, the struggles and everything that, that we face, you know, and trying to become who heavenly father wants us to become, you know, it's not always fun. Uh, you know, when, when making mistakes, you know, falling, slipping, going through the struggles, uh, but constantly seeking after, uh, I think, you know, just trying to figure out how to enjoy the process. Uh, I think it's hard to do sometimes, but, I've got yeah, a bolt, folks. Peace out. Right. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. That uh, kind of what, what he was saying reminded me. Um, I just recently was listening to, uh, and, you know, as everybody knows, I love Jordan Peterson. You know, I was listening to a recent episode of Jordan Peterson podcast where he was talking with uh, Dr. Niall Ferguson, uh, where they were talking about the uh, psychological and mythological um, uh, significance of you know, the end of the world narratives and things, you know, how there are every culture throughout history has these, these narratives of, you know, the end of the world, the apocalypse. And, um, it is really interesting because, um, it does help people kind of make sense of things. And they talk about, you know, when there's awful disasters, you know, natural disasters or things happen and, you know, it kind of helps people make sense of things, but, um, really yeah preparing for the end you know there you, you there's a there's a right way and a wrong way and uh if if you're so focused like like you know charlie was talking about you know like man i'm just gonna i'm you know i'm I'm gonna suffer and i'm gonna prepare but man when the end comes i'm gonna be ready it's like you're you're kind of missing the point you know it's like if you're if you're not able to to have that growth and enjoyment in the journey you know we're we're here 
like, you know, he was talking about Nick, you know, preparing, he spent 20 years as a Navy SEAL preparing for things that never even happened while he was there. And, you know, it made me think of how many people since the, the restoration has happened, you know, since, since Joseph Smith first, you know, with a handful of people, you know, started, you know, the, the restored church, how many people have lived their entire lives preparing for, for the, the savior's return and haven't seen it in their lifetimes. And we may or may not see it in our lifetimes and we don't know, but, um, yeah, yeah definitely we can, we can enjoy the journey. We can focus on, focus on the, the love and, and the camaraderie we have with the saints and just, yeah, just, yeah, there's no reason to, to think that it's all, everything's going to be okay. Then, you know, we can, we can be okay now too. We can, we can focus on the positives that we have. And, um, very good. Uncle, uh, Uncle Andrew, what you got? Anything? Just trying to find my socks right now. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing, nothing that hasn't already been said. Oh, come on, Uncle Andrew. I know you I there's holes in that theory. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, um, uh, just having a good time right now. So very good. Joe, you got anything? Yeah, Usain Bolt, uh, you know, the uh, marathon or not marathon, but Olympic uh, runner, sprinter, he famously said he trained for nine years to run for nine seconds or four, trained for four years to run for nine seconds. Right. Um, right. And yeah. the training has got to be part of it. Uh, sometimes we have this arrival fallacy that if if we only make it to the next thing, then then we'll be happy or then we'll feel complete or then then something else is different, but you, you got to live in the here and now and um, you got to, got to make use of that. Michael said something that sparked a memory um, about knowing everything or approaching things with a, a learning attitude. There's a, a Zen Buddhism concept called Shoshin. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly at all. Uh, and um, I looked it up real quick because it reminded me of that. And it refers to having an attitude of openness, eagerness, and lack of preconception when studying even at an advanced level, just as a beginner would. So having that mm. idea that we don't know everything, that there's still things to learn, even if we've been through this, you know, a million times, uh, that there's still something to gain from it. And then uh, Marcus had said something um, uh, talking about being prepared and, and the church being prepared essentially as being the, uh, the main driver there, not, not dependent on the world being wicked enough, but the church being righteous enough. And that's from the lesson here, um, Revelation 19, um, verses Three, 7 and 8. Verse seven. Okay. Yeah, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to mm -hmm. her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And it made me think, you know, we're talking about, we're using this allegory or metaphor, I don't know which is which, but... <laughs> If um, if her if her clothing, this white, pure clothing is our righteousness, yours and mine, if we're thinking of clothing as righteousness, it just made me think sometimes I think we get kind of stuck in a rut and we think about the things we have accomplished. Maybe we had a calling. Maybe we had a great experience on our mission. Maybe, you know, we look back with fondness on the day we were baptized. And I think all those are well and good. Those are kind of examples of righteousness in our lives. But if if we're attending this marriage feast and our clothing is our righteousness, if our righteousness is from 10 years ago, 20 years ago, I mean, how many of you guys still wear your, you know, clothes from high school or from your mission? Mm -hmm. um, Charlie I, I can brag here a little bit because like Andrew, I still wear the same sock size as I did in high school. So <laughs> aside from that, my clothes don't fit quite as well. But it made me think, though, that our righteousness, just like the training and preparation, you have to keep up. You have to keep um, kind of growing and learning and, and, and achieving, I think, is the, is the message there. Mm. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, function, um, so the, I had a thought when you were talking about that, the, uh, the Zen Buddhist principle. I knew you did. Yeah, because that. that as soon well, as I heard that, I said, Kenny knows all about that. 
No, well, it actually That's reminded me of boost. something else too. And we were kind of jokingly talking about how the teenagers know everything and stuff, but it reminded me of um, a, a, a thing called the Dunning Kruger effect that some yeah. people may or may not be familiar with. It's it's basically named after the um, the researchers that discovered it. And this it's it's a phenomenon it's the, in the which opposite people, of imposter syndrome. Yeah, basically. So it 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 it, it they've they were able to show that the amount of knowledge and skill that a person has in a particular area is directly inversely proportional to their own personal assessment of their knowledge and skill in that area. So the, the less, you know, the more confident you are. And I think it's funny how, and I've, I've noticed this in my own life, you know, after going back to school and learning things, you know, it's like, I remember when I thought I had it all figured out. And the more that I learned, the more stupid I feel, the more I feel like, you know, I, because the more you learn in an area, the more you see the, where the holes in your knowledge are, because you don't even see where the holes in your knowledge are to begin with, because you don't even know enough to know what you don't know. And that's one of the beautiful things about growth in the gospel, I think, is that the, one of the markers uh, to me of, of gaining in a little bit of spiritual maturity is r realizing, man, that I don't know Jack. You know, I'm just there's so much more that I have to learn. You know, there's so much more. And it's that just like you're talking about the, the Shoshin, you know, like approaching it, you know, that's that's part of your growth is being able to, you know, and once you get to a certain point, it's not just it, you don't have to feign that humility. It, it's genuine humility because, you know, after the more you learn, the more you see that you don't know. So, yeah, you approach the scriptures with fresh eyes like, hey, Lord, what can you teach me today? And um, especially in the book, the revelation is. You could go through that. We we could read through that over and over and over for years and never be satiated of, of the things that we can learn from it. It's, there's so much. Mm -hmm. Can I make a quick comment? No, yeah, um, absolutely. I, that's something we talked about at Institute tonight, Wednesdays at 630 in the chapel on Central <laughs> Avenue. <If you're interested. laughs> but we were talking, um, we're doing gospel and the productive life. And one of our things we talked about tonight was um, goal setting and Spencer W. Kimball in October of 1985, they did a greatest hits compilation because he could not speak at that point in his life. So they, they compiled a lot of video edits of him um, just from previous conferences. And he was talking a lot about over 10 years of conference talks, uh, goal setting, how important goal setting was in the church and how being young and goal setting sets the pattern for being older and goal setting. And you see a lot of people who serve missions, actually there's a huge slump in activity when they come home because they are suddenly so much less needed or structured because it's up to them to be needed and structured. And the same thing with a lot of what we call major callings in the church, sometimes people will drop off because suddenly they're like, well, I'm not needed anymore. And that's President Kimball's point was, it doesn't matter what the church and the Lord are asking you to do, what is your next goal? keeping you active. And I think um, one of the, uh, the beautiful things about the church is the study programs they have is goal setting every week. And I, I really love how um, the preparation never stops. You've never arrived. I, I was in a ward once where a lady said, well, I stopped coming because they just kept talking about faith. I'm like, well, yeah, because we don't get it. We get a taste of it. We think we know. And then we taste a little bit of something different with faith and we're like I didn't know this was an aspect of it I just the goal setting and I'm a huge re resolution person so write yours down work on them and if you don't ever want to be inactive if you don't ever want to lose your testimony make a goal to study something that you don't understand yet Amen. like the book of revelation because it don't make no sense let's be honest that's right. are we to that point yet of this it doesn't make that's a lot right. of sense that's yeah. right. if you think you get it you're lying to yourself right Oh, <laughs> that's right Hundo P. But so I'll let, let, let me share this with you, uh, based on your comment there, Heidi. Uh, so you, you talked about kind of callings of significance or, or a mission, you know, and then kind of dropping off and almost feeling like you're not needed, so to speak, or what have you. Uh, so, and you know, uh, Michael might be able to, uh, add to this, but, uh, so Bishop, Bishop Mathis, he was recently released and we, Bishop Moore is now our Bishop. So I was talking to Bishop Mathis uh, after he was a little bit after he was released, and he says, "When does that when does that void get filled?" And I said, "It really doesn't get filled." I said, "That 
you know, serving as, as, as a, as a Bishop is, it's, it's hard. It's, it's hard to describe. Uh, it's one of those where you, you got to fill those shoes to really fully be able to, to, to understand to be on. And I can compare it to a mission to be such involved with individual lives on such a personal basis and a, and a, a personal level is, and, and when, and then when that goes away, uh, there, there, there's a void and you feel you're like, man, I don't, you know, and, and I think, I think, uh, cause this podcast come about, I was released in May of 2018 and then in December of 2019. So basically a year and a half later is, is when I kind of reached out uh, to everybody. And I, I think this podcast is a, is a small way of me trying to feel that void a little bit and to be maybe more involved in, in people's lives. And obviously, you know, we, we, we have our families, we have our responsibilities there. We have our ministering and things like that. But, uh, but I, I just, when you mention that, it just, it just, it hits home. And so you've got to constantly work on things, be working on yourself and hopefully trying to make a, an impact in, in, in people's lives. So appreciate you sharing that. Mm-hmm. Um, Michael, what you got? Anything? Got anything for us? Wait a minute. You, you can't get away from yeah. that comment. So this, yeah. this whole thing started because of a midlife crisis. Is that yeah. what you're saying? <laughs> wow. well, I'm kind of still going through a midlife crisis it. right now. So, but that, 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 that's a whole other topic right there. So. <laughs> Jackson hasn't even hit midlife yet. He's still, yeah, I know. he's on his 400th episode of midlife crisis. Yeah. That's right. That's, that's actually what he's, he's changing the podcast name to midlife crisis. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, so I, I do have a thought here, Michael, if you don't do, do you have something to share? Yeah, but go me? ahead with your thought. No, no, good. No, it's, it's a whole nother thought based on from the, from the come follow me, but I, I, I'd like oh, you go to ahead. share if, if you go got ahead. something. Well, I'll probably have a thought after you have your thoughts. So let's, okay. have, you know, it'll be an afterthought though. Sounds good. Revelation chapter 15 verses two through four. Uh, I love the imagery of battles that's one of the reasons i love the book of alma so much in the book of mormon overcoming um i love i love history american history i love the american revolutionary war just all that overcoming that uh so verse 2 chapter 15 and i saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And I just think about that hopefully when, when all this is said and done and we've passed our test here, the purpose of this life, a probationary state, imagine just, I I picture the joy they're talking about singing here. I think of the greatest celebration that you can imagine Super Bowl celebration, NBA championship, World Series, UFC championship, whatever it is, right? Overcoming this probationary state that we are in and victory and having victory over the beast, over Satan and all that he throws at us, I think is going to be a glorious, glorious day. Uh, and I hope to be a part of that celebration. You will be if you want it. Absolutely. Because um, cause it's all about, you know, what laws you're willing to live. So you guys were talking about a couple things that I wanted to piggyback on when you're talking about um, someone was talking about enjoying, enjoying life now and not looking forward to the next thing. So I remember um, we were doing really well in Oklahoma City. We had our own company. We had several employees. Uh, it was it was nice. We were kind of living the life. And then the e postage stamp came out and people didn't need um, postage meters as much anymore. And the company I was contracting to uh, went from 95 percent market share down to 70 and suddenly they didn't need my company anymore. 
and we were done in 30 days. We were done. And so I ended up taking a job with a big retailer that shall not be mentioned and moving to Arkansas. And, um, it was the, the, the whole time I was thinking, man, I want to get to the point where I can go eat lunch with my kids. I want to get, you know, I want to get enough money that I can just have it there that I can go eat lunch with my kids, you know, when they're at school or whatever. So this was the lowest point of our life, making the least amount of money we've ever made in our lives. And then now I have four kids, right? And so it, it, the thought had a, occurred to me then that I don't know if I'm ever going to do better than I'm doing right now. I, I don't have control over that, right? I don't know if we're ever going to get out of this. So I thought, well, they're giving me a lunch now. It's a paid lunch. Why don't I just take turns going to go see my kids every day? So every day of the week, well, with the exception of, of Fridays, but on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, Monday, I'd go eat with this daughter, Tuesday with this daughter, Wednesday with my son, and Thursday with my other daughter. And <clears throat> keep in mind that th th this was the lowest, uh, financially, and for me, my um, self-esteem was at the lowest it's ever been. But my kids remember that as being the, the best that we ever lived. Like, we, we had nothing, right? But all they talk about now is our life in Arkansas and how we went to we went to this, and Dad came and ate lunch with us at school all the time and how fun that was. And all my friends were like, well, my dad doesn't come. I wish he would come. And then they would all sit with us. And then pretty soon our table kept growing and growing and growing because all the other kids wanted to come eat with Michaela's dad at lunch or McKenzie's dad. And um, I'm like, you don't remember how poor we were, do you? They're like, no, no, it was awesome. <laughs> so, I mean, to me, that was like, uh, enjoy, enjoy where you're at now. Right. And, uh, so that was cool. Mm -hmm. The other thing I wanted to piggyback on was, uh, something that Joe said, you know, he was talking about making sure that we're, well, I think Marcus said it too, making sure that we're ready and prepared to sit at the supper, right. The feast. And, um, I just wanted to like, uh, I was reading in the, uh, uh, one of the Institute manuals. I don't know if this one is archived or not um, because I, I save all the archived material because I just, I don't know, Heidi, I just love going back and reading all the old stuff that the church put out. I, I just read it over and over again. It's, anyway, this was in there. It's ta talking about that. He said, only the righteous we be called to the marriage supper. And talking about President Joseph Smith uh, was talking about... Um, individuals who are permitted to sit at this glorious feast and reflecting on, you know, whether you consider yourselves worthy or not. I want to talk to everybody out there just for a second that, that think that they're never going to be worthy. Okay. Cause to me, we have two sets of people. We have those that, that think that no matter what they do, no matter what they say, they're going to make it. And then you have those that think no matter what they do, no matter what they say, no matter how hard they try, try they're never going to make it. I want to speak to those. I want to speak to that side for a sec. And the the way that we, I, I think it, it, the the prophets and apostles are emphasizing repentance so much lately. I think is because they're trying to help us understand that that's how we stay righteous is is is, is repentance. Because we're not going to always follow the commandments. We're always not always going to make the right choice. We're not always going to. Um, turn left when we should have turned right. We're not always going to listen to the Holy Ghost. We're, sometimes we're going to mess up, and, and a lot of times we're going to mess up. But that's why they talk about running to repentance, because that's how we're going to be righteous, is repenting and trying again and repenting and trying again. That's how we become righteous, because then then the atonement can sink in because we're, re we're repenting. The atonement can take an effect, and we become righteous enough for that supper. So for all of our saints out there that are thinking, I'm never going to be righteous enough for that, I'm like, yes, you will. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. You just keep trying and keep repenting. And then uh, someone was talking about um, our callings of significance, right? I was reminded when Elder Renlin came to our training, um, when he was uh, training the uh, the bishops and the um, stake presidents and um Oh, a few other presidents, I think young women's presidents and, and things like that. But anyway, he was talking about making an, an analogy between between uh, his dad, Elder Inland's dad, and the um, uh, President Monson. Do you guys remember that? <clears throat> that was super cool because he says, uh, 
you know, my dad had no no noteworthy calling ever, like nothing noteworthy. And then look at President Monson and, you know, Bishop at what, 20? Apostle at 30? I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm getting the numbers wrong. but 22 and 36, I think is what it was. Yeah. But then he says, uh, so what's going to be the difference between their reward or their exaltation or their glory? He says, absolutely nothing. 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 Not a thing. And um, so I, I thought that was pretty cool. The, the, the last thing I wanted to comment on was... Um, um, let's see. No, that's it. That's it. That's all I got for now. That's it. Very good. Um, I'm still I do waiting want to hear from Uncle Andrew, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, that, that, does anybody have anything else from from this particular lesson that you'd like to share? Uh, there's a uh, there's a little interesting just tidbit. You know, I always have something else. Yeah, it can't, can't this happen. and this this is it's not. I mean, I know we've had some really cool, super awesome spiritual thoughts. I, I literally was tearing up a minute ago when Michael was talking about his kids. Man, that was that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Man, thank you. But in um, verses fifteen, I mean chapters rather uh, fifteen and sixteen. You know, um, you had, you had read some from uh, fifteen, and then in sixteen it goes into the plagues. A little thing that was interesting to me that I never caught before um, toward the end of chapter 16, one of, one of the plagues that it talks about is a plague of great hail out of heaven. It says every stone about the weight of a talent. And he says, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail for the plague thereof was, was exceeding great. I know I've read that before, but I'm like, okay, a plague of hail. Yeah, it's going to be so bad. Hail sucks. We don't have hail storms around here very much, but you know, I've I have I've seen it before, and you know, we have had hail stones that were pretty big. You know, or where if they hit your hit your window or something, you're like pop pop pop. It's kind of loud. It's kind of you know, like oh, man, this is bad. One thing I never knew. It says they were weight of a talent. Does anybody know the weight of a talent? I've always I thought know. of a talent as a coin. I, I I was assuming it meant like you know maybe a large coin or something. No, depends this depends on what your talent is. I mean, if it's bowling, then, you know, <laughs> 10, yeah. pounds. So so ta the talent was actually um, a unit of weight. Um, and so th there's some differences. Um, I think the Bible Dictionary says that the what they were talking about was about um, seven. Actually, I think it was seventy six pounds. Um, in Wikipedia. There's, it says ancient Israel adopted the Babylonian weight talent, but later revised it. The heavy common talent used in New Testament times was 129 pounds, 14 ounces. A Roman talent divided into 100 libre was one third attic talents, blah, 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 was 71 pounds, three ounces. An Egyptian talent was 60 pounds. So. The, the, out, of, out of these different units of measurement, the, the very smallest, the very, very smallest is the Egyptian talent. And the thing is, the, the way that it was used in, in the New Testament in, um, in the, you know, the, the time that John was writing was actually the, the coin, the talent was actually equal to this much silver. So a talent was worth a lot of money. That's, you know, it's, it's, it's no joke, you know, but, so it's different in different parts, but if you think of it this way, the, at the very, very least, we're talking about hailstones that are 60 pounds each. Yeah, that's insane. 60 pounds. And that's anywhere from 60 to 130 pounds, mm. you know, depending on which weight, you know, unit of, of talent we're talking about. That just blew me away as far as the plagues go. It just gave me a whole different perspective. Like that's, that's, it makes more sense now. That's kind of hail storm that would make I people. Feel like I feel like gone. tank sales are going to soar during this time. <laughs> people are going to want tanks. Hey, listen, I'm telling you, I'm in the right, I'm in the right business. Okay. Claim we see hail storms all the time. Okay? I'm in the right business as a claims adjuster. So here we go. Well. <laughs> hey, uh, so appreciate you sharing that. Um, all right. As we get ready to close this out, um, I got uh, I got two questions for any of you, and and then I'm going to close this out with it with a thought. Uh, question uh, question number one is, um, how has come follow me affected your life and your family's life? And anybody's open to answer. Andrew, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's like we keep going. Uh, Glenn, yeah. So uh, come follow me. I wish. 
you know how sometimes people say, you know, preparing to talk is very difficult. But, um, you know, if you're studying, like for example, I play guitar in a band. If someone asked me to play guitar for, for an event tomorrow, it would, would be fairly easy just because I'm in the game of it. You know what I mean? So in the past, when I was doing the podcast and would study for the weeks, come follow me, I was always prepared. I was always great in Sunday. I say great Sunday school. I was always, always had answers if people asked. And, um, you know, ups and downs through the four years of come follow me. And, you know, uh, come follow me is very great. I feel like um, I wish I wish – Wish all can just. I wish all can be on Saints in the South. If you're uh, if you're actually uh, on it every week, you how prepared you are. So you know you don't necessarily have to be on the podcast to do that. But um, I think it's a very well organized, very well planned curriculum. And um, I actually look up to Jackson for y- y- y'all. Got to think now. Four years, Jackson House started this, and look at all the people that's been in and out. And um, man, I, I that personal satisfaction of beginning something and ending it four years that's great that's an example so um i look up to jackson sure, yeah. in it out because I, I mean that could have been i mean i quit a few times <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> uh, it's, it, yeah you know life gets in the way but i know um i know come follow me has really looking back looking back at those uh, uncle andrew box of socks um the memories of making it and uh, where i was at in my life and how it blessed me with uh, different things, uh, job-wise, um, life. Um, it's easy, it's easy, it's easy to forget that, you know. But um, I think we really study, come follow me, and look back and reflect. You know, for all of us, we could look back on all these videos, the four years of all the great memories we've made. So, very good, you know, very I'm good. Yep. Anybody else? Did, how, there how is how uh, yeah, here I am again. There is one more thing before that. I one more thing. No, 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 no I've already, I've no. already cut that off. No. We're, 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 we're past revelation. Yeah, no, there's there, no way no, that there's yeah, one more thing. On. No, this is important. This, this is do, important. Do, I promise. Do, do, no, do, there'll do be your, another one. And do, do, do your own little revealed. Do, do, do your own little short. Okay, uh, this, uh, this is this is this is going to be the short. Then you can you can clip this out. Chapter chapter twenty two, verse nineteen. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. This verse has been taken out of context so many times. And obviously, I think we understand that, that what this means. This is referring to the book of the Revelation. And I just want to make sure that we touched on this before we close it out to understand that this verse obviously is referring to the revelation, not to the, you know, some people have tried to use this to say that this is referring to the entire Bible. Uh, The Bible, as we know it, did not exist when this was written. As a matter of fact, the revelation, there were several books of the New Testament that were written uh, chronologically after the revelation was written. So it's just, it's, it's an interesting thing that a lot of people, I feel like every time I hear somebody try to use that argument, um, against the church, you know, to against the book of Mormon or something, you know, they say, Oh, revelation, revelation says this, um, they don't get it. You know, that's, that's taken grossly out of context. And, uh, so that's just something I want to make sure that we didn't, uh, leave the book of revelation without touching on that. You feel better. I do. Thank you. Thank (laughs) you for, thank you for indulging me on that. Yeah. I feel better. Very good. Very good. (laughs) All right. uh, Anybody else? Go ahead. I have a quick comment. I just has, Home Center Church, the Come Follow Me manual, how amazing and comprehensive in so many ways it is, but it doesn't have to be comprehensive for your family, more it's a guide. It's Mm -hmm. for our family in particular, I have studied it and I've been like, we could have a two hour Home Center Church, it'll never happen. My kids would be in agony, but theoretically that could happen two hours or more because of how much great information is in there. I can take one verse and or one section and say, mm-hmm. this is what our family really needs and go from there and piggyback it with all. Of, I mean, the gospel um, living app has so many things. Mm-hmm. The gospel library has so many things. It's a guide to using everything. It's not a stick to this section. And I really love that part about it because I feel 
you become so intimately acquainted with all the books of the gospel simply through the Come Follow Me program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, one thing I like about the Come Follow Me, I mean, we just have to create our own cover photo because if you look at the cover photo of every Come Follow Me, my family's not like that. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I True that. No, some some are, and that's great. And some some you know. My, I haven't met anybody my, like that. So, uh, so uh, yeah, create your own cover photo, your own cover page of your Come Follow Me, and because uh, uh, you know, I go back to Joseph Smith, the first video, you know, the first painting were beautiful. The, he had beautiful clothes on, but in reality, he was a limping third. He was a limping boy who was uh had ragged old clothes on with no leaves on the forest. And I mean, it, you know, but, but his heart was in the right place. The heart of it is deeper than what, um, I hope I'm making sense. It, yeah. I mean, it makes, make, makes perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Everybody yeah. follow me. Um, can be on and, um, yeah, I, I, sometimes I, like Heidi, I have to pick one verse, you know, but, um, at least, at least, um, at least it's there. I could dive into and pick pick from. So I like that. I, I, like, I like the video that. that you did on that, Andrew, with when you were doing the box of socks videos where you and your family went to visit the sacred grove and you talked about oh, that. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. You know, as far as come follow me goes, I think it, you know, honestly, I mean, look at the things that are happening here in the last days, how things are getting, let's just be honest, things were running out of excuses. <laughs> To, to not do the things the Lord's asking us to do. Uh, you know, I mean, it's like he's making things so much easier. You, you can pay your tithing in like two seconds now online. I mean, you know what I mean? It's like you can, you can, I mean, there's just, there's so many things that are happening that are just expediting uh, and, and allowing us to be able to be flexible and, and be able to study wherever, whenever. There's so many resources. Um, when you, you can just type in, come follow me LDS in Google. And there, and you're going to come up with a hundred videos about, you know, that you can study with. Um, there's so many books, there's so many things been written, so many, you know, conversations. And, and so there's just so much, it's, it's, it's like, there's no guesswork. You know what I mean? It's like, you know what the lesson is, you know, what scriptures we're going over and you can go from a million different ways of how you want to discuss that. And it can cater to any family dynamic. Um, and so it's just, it's just amazing the times that we live in the resources that we have. Um, and, and it's just, it, it's exciting to be able to, to do that. The other thing I like too, especially starting in 2024 is everybody's on the same page from seminary to primary to young men, young women to elders quorum. I mean, or whatever, you know, everybody, I mean, um, come follow me at home. Everything's the same. So in my mind as a Bishop, I'm thinking, wow, the lessons should start becoming better in my pre-scorm class because they should be coming in here and be able to give a lesson that they have went over with their family already. So they should know at least a little bit about it before coming in here. You know what I mean? Um, you know, hopefully the families are doing it and things like that and encouraging one another to do those things but i don't know it's just it just seems like we're running out of excuses we're not going to be able to stand before the lord one day and say you know what i just i didn't really I didn't know what have what i needed right yeah i didn't have what i, I needed or i didn't re didn't really know what direction to go i didn't know what to do it's like man it's like it's it was just there i mean there's all yeah. kind of, and not saying it's super easy and i'm not acting like i mean it you still have to carve out time you still have to you know try to corral all the, all the family together and everything else. But you know right. what I mean? It's, it, it's a lot better than it was probably in, you know, 1890. That's right. I don't know. The internet connection is better anyway. Right. It is yeah. exactly. Well, Hey, well, we are, we're at our, uh, hour mark. Um, I know everybody's schedules are busy and everything. Uh, before I close it out, any, any last thoughts? Can I, yeah, I'll say, ahead. um, yep. Uh, the the come follow me i love how simple it is but how inviting it is to dig deeper um like i i feel yeah. like and it's happened <laughs> where i literally was walking out of the chapel uh one day and they're like oh so you're ready to teach sunday school and i was like what for real they're like no yeah you agreed to this and i was like what is that today and they're like yeah and and it was a lot easier because it was it, the, the way come follow me is structured and then also 
the way it's structured invites other people to participate and stuff. It's of course it's different given a Sunday. I mean, a, a, a teach during sacrament or whatever, but it, it is easy and it's inviting. And then the last thing I wanted to say was um, from talking about the gospel, talking about the lessons in revelation, it is very complicated or can be with all the imagery and stuff, but I think it comes down to essentially there are, uh, it is, it is simple once you boil it down to its essence. It's essentially choosing sides. And and in Revelation 20, verse 12, I'll just read it real quick. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And I wanted to cross, cross that over with DNC 137, verse 9. And the few verses before that are very enlightening, too, of how how favorably will be judged. And in verse nine, so this is a, a plug for for the additional works here. For I, the Lord, will judge all men according to their works, according to the desire of their hearts. And I think I heard someone while while reading and researching this, someone said, you know, that the common phrase is the road to hell is paved with good intentions. But perhaps with this further revelation, we can understand that the road to heaven may be as well, that God understands us and he loves us. And the goal is to get as many of us back uh, living with him again and learning to become like him. Um, and, and just knowing our hearts are in the right place. I think, um, you know, Michael was talking about this earlier, um, that, that so many people feel like they're not going to make it. But I, I feel like a loving Heavenly Father will help as many of us can make it, make it. Mm -hmm. anyway. Very good. Very good. Appreciate that very much. Um, and I wanted to close this by just thanking every one of you, Andrew, Michael, Joe, Marcus, Kenny, Heidi, Charlie, Stephen, all of you have had a uh, huge role to play in this little uh, podcast that started uh, four years ago. Um, I would not have started it on my own. That's one of the reasons I had to reach out to uh, a handful of y'all and, and ask for your help. And uh, thank you for giving, thank you for assisting me, helping supply courage uh, to, 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 to do this thing. Where it goes, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but uh, it's been it's been a fun four years. You know, our opening slogan is gospel growth in good times. Uh, we have definitely had some good times and I think we've experienced some gospel growth as well. And from the feedback that we've gotten from people all over, literally all over the world, uh, have experienced uh, some of the same things as well. And what a wonderful blessing uh, that technology provides us. And uh, thankful for again, just th thankful for all of all of y'all and uh everything that you all of your contributions and 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 getting on tonight you know again i know you had to adjust your schedules and things like that so again just thank you uh love y'all and uh happy to be to, to, to call your friends hey I, let me I, I gotta tell you thank you jackson uh honestly i i wouldn't have i wouldn't have made it four days if it wasn't for you um because because honestly you were the guy i mean it's if you you called the shots if you weren't there i wasn't gonna be there i tried I mean, to stand I mean? out a few times but y'all like no we ain't yeah. gonna do it like, no no we, 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 we'll wait on you um but yeah man i mean it this is actually a really cool thing i would have never i'll just say this i myself would have never done something like this and so i'm glad that you had the vision or the or the foresight and, and the desire to do this and that I was able to tag along and, and, too, yeah. Yeah, and, and kind of be a part of it, man. It's, it, it was, it's been a blessing to me in my life. I mean, it, it did get to a point. I mean, it did for all of us. I know it does for all of us. It got to a point where it was it used to be a grind. Yeah. Well, it is because, because it is a, this is a job. I mean, it really yeah. is a job. It's, you know, you got to just carve out an hour or two sometimes and prepare and make sure that you have not just preparing for a lesson, but preparing for a podcast. In other words, what are you going to present? What are we going to talk about? I'm not saying that we were always that organized. We got way more organized when Heidi came along, but you know, <laughs> when, when, you know, we actually had some guidance in, but you know, when, but you know, it took a lot of time and it became a grind. It, it, it did. And, uh, but you know, 
I wouldn't trade it for anything. I'm glad I was part of it. I'm so thankful that you were, you wanted to do this thing. All, all, all from the whole thing of coming up with a logo to the theme song to the theme guitar thing, which by the way is Andrew and I in the Relief yep. Society room recording that little yep. guitar uh, intro outro thing, um, buying the equipment, learning how to set levels, um, learning how to present, how to how do we get the algorithm up? How do we do it? was just fun stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I learned a lot. Um, you know, I'm not saying I was great at it, but it, it was really fun. So, yeah. And we couldn't, we, we, we can't close out without thanking those who are listening right now because Absolutely. yeah, that's, that's what kept, you know, as long as we knew there's at least a handful of people that appreciated what we were doing, that's Rick that's Long, doing. Catherine, Rick Long. Uh, uh, Catherine, yeah. is it Catherine Wright? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Catherine Wright. Yeah. Lots of them. Um, yeah. You know, those are the ones that stand out. There's so many. I mean, you know, I, yeah, I there's a bunch of started that, trying yeah, to name that <laughs> chair. Yeah. We appreciate it so much because, yeah, it just, it, it really, you know, just like anything else in life, it, it makes you feel good and it gives you a little bit of encouragement to know that there are people that appreciate what you're doing, you know, that are getting something out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, I love it whenever, you know, somebody was like, Hey, I listened to the, you know, the podcast this week, or, you know, somebody comments on YouTube or something. It's, it's great. Did you Man, share that? You did you, did you share that story, Jackson, about the missionaries? Patriarchal blessing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I'll share this real quick. We, uh, I'd mentioned before we started recording, uh, I said, and, and, never- and just to, this will culminate into the, you know, kind of wrap it up to show right. that if it's just this one person, wow, right. this was well worth four years. So. Yep. So, uh, so I, we had the missionaries over for dinner this evening and, uh, they were talking and they said that, um, uh, they were, they're teaching an, an individual and they asked the individual asked the mission, asked them, they said, Hey, what's a, can you talk to me about a patriarchal blessing? What, what is that? And they said, well, yeah, we, we can definitely explain that to you. They said, but, but where did you hear about that? And they said, well, I was listening to uh saints in the South podcast <laughs> and I'm just like, there, there you go. You know, like, learning something new there so yeah and and i think that was our goal jackson as as you stated that was our goal is to show that hey have fun with the gospel it it's not a it shouldn't and when we're talking about a grind i don't want anybody to think that it was a grind that we had to study the gospel no. and talk about the gospel that's not what i'm talking about that, that was the fun part the but it's it was a grind just do taking the, the time the, the, the trying, production. To, trying to do this right. extra thing. Yeah. But but no, what I'm getting at is is you can have a ball learning about and I have done that doing this podcast. You you can talk about things of the gospel and and have fun with that and understand and grow and learn and share with others. And it's a and it's not some kind of stiff, you know weird stuffy time to sit down and just listen like in a class like it's math or something you know for, yeah. sorry for those that love math but uh you know what i'm saying it can be fun you're know, learning and growing and we've never ever and everybody can back me up we've never said as a matter of fact many times we did say that we are not the scholars uh do do not take our word for it please go and study and you know we always try to give our you know, the people, you know, the actual proper, um, yeah. uh, citations is what am I trying to say? Um, things that people sources say, we try and to everything. sources, yeah. there you go, sources, citations. That's what I got. The other day. <laughs> anyway. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Well, there you go. Well, again, appreciate it. And until next time y'all keep on striving. Mm-hmm.